So this beauty right here, this is our 1993 Randwin parked F700 truck that we picked up for $2,000. And on the previous video, we got it running. We could talk about it, or I could just show you real quick. If you wanna see the process, I started a playlist. You can check it out, but the engine was slightly locked up. We changed some plugs, some wires, that kind of thing. Threw some fresh gas in her, and after a few cranks, did what we were hoping. For just a minute here. I was telling him that, that you run. I don't know if you want to... Good time for you to fire up here. She runs. She's just, she's a little shy. I'm really gonna need you to start for the intro here. The whole thing kind of revolves around you being a running truck, so. She's, you know, she'll, she's gonna. Oh yeah, yeah, she's excited. shooting videos of will it run and will it dump in the middle of the parking lot. You just wonder what people think. Come here, bud. Anyway, today we're gonna see if we can get it running better and try to test the dump bed because we have not tested the dump bed yet. But we gotta do a few things before we can do that. Well, let's get started on it. First thing we gotta do, there's a little rubber boot down here. A little rubber hose. This guy right here. Well, it's got a tear in it. And when we put coolant in, everything we put in just ran right out. I believe this was a casualty of the loading process. I'm not gonna say it was the smoothest thing. So I need to get this off there so I can take that to town and try to find something to replace it. We gotta have coolant. We can fire it up and run it without coolant just to see if it actually ran. But to leave it run for an extended amount of time to actually try to lift and run the bed a little bit, probably be good to have some coolant in there. If we get this fixed and this thing proves to be reliable, we'll probably build some sort of guard here. And we're gonna be, you know, just cramming this into some spots it shouldn't belong at some point. Come on, baby. There we go. Let's not lose that. Oh, nice. That wasn't too bad. The next thing we gotta do is figure out where the fuel filter's at, because I did not change fuel filter yet. I think that's gonna make a pretty big difference in what we're doing. We're just gonna play the old follow the fuel line game. I looked online, looks like there's several options of where it might be. I don't think I can fit under that tent. It's already flat though, so I don't have to worry about that smashing me. Am I the only one that thinks about what happens if a tire blows out? But I can't be the only one that thinks that. Is that it right there? That's fuel on. What's this other filter back here? So this is the exact filter wrench for this situation. I was actually gifted this by a subscriber maybe over a year ago, but it's pretty handy. It's just a half inch drive. It's got little teeth on that. And then as you turn it, it will tighten those down onto the filter. So if we want to loosen it, we turn it to the left, those will bite down and then we can take that filter off. This is the perfect solution for filters that are accessible straight from the bottom, but kind of hard to get up around and get your hand or another wrench on. You just snuck up there. You kind of got to hold it in place to get you started. But once it bites on there, you're good to go. There we go. Take that off and we'll just spin her out by hand. Hopefully a whole bunch of gas doesn't come shooting out. We're going to get a little bit. Well, we're just going to take a picture of the filter number, 3361 Napa. We're going to run town, pick that up, see if we can find a hose, come back. So I was able to get the fuel filter. I was not able to get that radiator piece though. Let's see if this fuel filter makes a difference for us. One thing that this truck does not have that we're definitely going to have to install somewhere. Well, one, I got to come up with some kind of lid for this box at some point. Hey, I need to get a master disconnect on it. Well, 
Well, we actually have throttle response now. Sometimes, sometimes it just turns off. It also feels as if the brakes release. So the brakes actually hold pressure, which is wild. And those appear to release. So that's good. Manipulate this contraption somehow. I'm assuming that cable runs down through here. And then we got our valve. We're gonna be blowing hydraulic lines for sure. That one's resting on the exhaust. So that's something. So it's probably six days later. So let me show you. This is what we took off. It had the Ford part number on it and everything. We took this down to the local mom and pop. We took it to the chains. We looked all over the internet. We couldn't find this anywhere. But what we did find is a very similar part. They're the same material on the inside and out, and they both have that coil of wire around there. Uh, that's what we're going to use. I got two of them. They're 14 bucks a piece, so it just made sense to get two of them. The size I wasn't 100% sure on whether we were going with this. And I got one that's just a little bit longer. If we need to trim it, we can trim it. We did try some other things, but they are either too soft that it collapsed on that offset, and I didn't want that, or they're too rigid that they put a lot of pressure on the bottom of that radiator. I don't want to put a lot of extra pressure that causes that thing to crack. We also picked up some T-bar clamps because me personally, I think the T-bar clamps hold more even pressure and I think they're stronger. But again, I'm just making this stuff up as we go. So don't take my word for it. Research it yourself. I guess it's worth pointing out this hole here. That was the cause of the leak. Good rule of thumb. If your thumb fits through it, it's probably going to leak. Yeah, it's just a pretty aggressive offset from uh, here to here. And maybe it's not, you know, this bracket's bent pretty good. So is, so is this one is the back. Maybe the offset's not supposed to be that aggressive. I'm gonna say it's probably not. Yeah, we gotta get that off there. We gotta do, we gotta, we gotta do something there. So this is a random part where the video, the uh, microphone just decided to cut out that bracket there that holds whatever the heck it is I'm trying to straighten out. It's supposed to be more of a 90 degree. It's like a 72. So I grabbed a speed binder off a Dirt Perfect Slow Boy trailer and uh, his drill jammed it in between the two of them and just ran it out. I didn't know if it worked very well or not, but it worked pretty well, actually. I actually sent him a message. I said, you got a port of power with a RAM? He said, I do. You're more than welcome to use it. Didn't need it. Speed binder worked fine. Um, not, nah, no complaints. No complaints at all. I mean, look at, look at this fine, look at the fabrication work. Look at the, look at this. The professionalism. I could charge people for this. I could charge people for this work. Worked out pretty well. That's probably why the offset ripped because it was so offset because of how much it got damaged whenever we loaded it on the truck. But uh, we're getting her fixed now. She looks good. Well, I'm going to take this bracket loose here. Then I think that'll give us the flexibility we need to get this boot in there. Break it anyway, aren't we? Aren't we? We're just gonna break it anyway. Okay. There we go. Put a water whisper into it. Sometimes that helps though, maybe. How you guys doing? You guys doing doing all right? Doing good? Hope so. Hope all your dreams are coming true today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You guys ever hit yourself in the face? You want me to show you a good technique for it?
Hello. Oh, that's a lot. That's that's a lot. Look, look at all the freedom. How much more does a guy need, huh? Well, all right. Hopefully, we can get this manipulated on here now. All right, there's the bottom. With a little help from the bar here. Go ahead and put down time number two to the microphone. Decided to quit working. Just use the Halligan with the ads end to get that pushed back up. I had a hard time getting this bolt and nut to line back up because whenever I pried down to get the boot lined up, it spread that metal apart. But we got her in there. No problem. And then we started slowly adding the coolant slash antifreeze, whatever you want to call it, into the system to make sure there weren't any leaks. Ended up putting about five gallons into it. It's an eight gallon system, so five gallons into the rad probably kind of makes sense. And then we went through, these are notorious, according to Wes from Watch Wes Work, and a bunch of forums for burning up the spark plug wires, which is probably why they put these heat boots on here. So I went through and made sure I had these things tucked all the way in, that way we didn't burn up any of these wires, or at least reduce the chance of it. Use a super professional technique of a screwdriver and just shoved them back. So I couldn't shove them back anymore. That seemed like the best technique for me. Four gallons in right now. I'm going to take some zip ties and I'm going to dress up plug wires just a little bit. So I got five gallons in and we're at the top of the reservoir. That's probably about right. It says it's an eight gallon system. So there's probably another three in there somewhere. I did pick up some new caps so we can get rid of the saran wrap. However, they don't have the rubber on the bottom and I feel like they should. But we'll see how they do. They don't work we'll throw the strain wrap back on and order some rubber seems silly to send caps without rubber but... so now that's got coolant in it assuming the temp gauge actually works in this rig we're gonna fire it up let it run let it get up to temp see if you can't blow some of that congestion it's got out of there we keep getting smoke from the passenger side whenever we started on this we poured some marvel's mystery down the spark plug holes and afterwards we ran it without the spark plugs in try to puke as much as that Marvel's Mystery oil out. I'm pretty sure that smoke is just that oil soaked into the exhaust manifold burning off and we haven't been hot enough to burn everything off yet, but I'm gonna keep a close eye and try to look at that valve cover over there and see if it's not perhaps leaking. That's definitely a possibility. And uh, while we're letting her get up to temp, we might as well mess with the bed a little bit too, you know? Fingers crossed she breaks down with the bed in the air. At least it looks like we're making progress. Of course, I'm being optimistic that the coolant system is not just going to puke out everywhere. But... Let her go for a minute. Just let her go for a minute. Somebody made the comment they thought the exhaust was only coming out one side. Certainly possible. Definitely a chance that something crawled underneath there and built a nest in one of them. But... Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are both open. You can see all the oil and stuff on that. I don't see any coolant puking out anywhere. I see a few small drips, but. If she burst into flames, we'll just have to move the low boy trailer real quick. Certainly help with the mosquitoes, that's for sure. 
Well, it didn't burn off or it won't. We'll know at some point. Temp gauge doing anything? Sure would like for that to clear up. Try to get you in close so you can see. Also coming off the pipe too. As far as what's coming out the exhaust. The temp gauge is moving, so that's good. And the warmer she gets, the more responsive she becomes. We're burning some of that crud out. Let's, uh, let's, see, let's see what this does. Let's open the other door too, though. Yeah. Kill myself right now. Hold on. A little cross ventilation wouldn't hurt anything. All right. Well, let's see if the dump bed does anything. By the way, if you're a loyal fan of the channel and you want some Captain Kleeman merch, you know that we sell it once a year. We do pre-orders in October. They are up now, link in the description. Pre-orders shut down October 26th, then everything gets turned into the printer, and in a month, two months later, we'll ship, ship, ship everything out to you, if you want. It's a single color, there's multiple designs. If the website doesn't pull up or doesn't seem like it's working, that's because you're outside of where we ship to, so it's not supposed to be working, and it's doing what it's supposed to be, doing. Do you think if I just left that running and left, they'd call the fire department on it? I can hear something, hey. It's moving. It seems it might be a little low on fluid. I think she's low on fluid. I think she needs some. I need a stick checker. Oh, yeah, there's about an inch of fluid in there. I feel like it ought to be more than that. Got a little bit of a, a funnel train going on here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Just need someone to hold that for me while I put the fluid in. There. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, perfect. Can't think of a better way to do it. Oh, oh. Well, there's a little more in there. Probably needs more than that. It's only about half. But, uh. Things don't sound right. Sound good at all, does it? Uh oh. Let's try something here. And I know what it sounds like. I can hear it. You know, I just I'm trying to. Hmm. Horn works. That's good. You can hear it catch. Yeah, and as soon as you go, it doesn't. It was a junk truck that I paid a junk price for. And I was hoping we'd get lucky and be able to use it this winter. And then run it through the winter, fix any of the small bugs that come up. And if it worked good for us, 
put some time and money into it next summer. But now, it is a junk truck that I still pay junk price for that we're gonna drag up to the world headquarters and leave it sit until probably next summer. I have no intention of tearing into an engine right now whenever I got two other ones apart. I just strap this down so it doesn't blow away. Don't expect to see that except in the background for a long time. Next video, we're hauling some chert rock for Mike and hauling some chert up to our house with the triaxle. 755 is coming up, more gym is coming up. And um, when I get the drive shaft back, we will have a running driving F, whatever that is at the house that we've been working on for a while. Good things coming. Not gonna let that bum me out for more than a few minutes. I did say I'd rather rebuild an engine than a frame, so at least I got that wish to come true. It's probably something simple. It's just 